takes 10,000 cash to catch a muskie. And it's a hunt, and you go out and try to locate the fish. Then after you locate them, then you have to try to catch them. So there's a lot of work to it. There's always a lot of big muskie caught, trophy muskie, every year, including the state record that was caught here a couple years ago by a 14-year-old girl said, don't take a grown-up to catch big fish. Look at me, I caught the new Kentucky state record out of uh, Cave Run Lake. I don't think I've ever screamed that loud before, or I've, I don't think I've ever said, oh my gosh, as many times. It's truly been an experience. One of the most southern states that have muskie, and we have world-class fish here. Now these fish don't magically appear by themselves. They are actually raised at a hatchery by the Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources and restocked in the lakes and streams and rivers around the area. And the process of stocking these fish begins with shocking the fish. Oh, musky. All right, Eric, get a bag ready. We're gonna put the fish in the bag. We're gonna get a length on it. 43. We're gonna check if it's a male or female. Yeah, yeah. Female. female. We're gonna pin clip it so we'll know it's right there. Uh, so that we'll know that it came from the river when we go to spawn it. Females we like to have in the 40 to 45 inch range, but uh, males, that's a good size for a male. Oh, right there. Two up. Oh, what a nice one. Oh! Get it, Eric. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 48 and a half. You know, we'll end up spawning probably 15 or 20 females, oh, and we'll need 30 males probably to do that. We'll shock them for three days and, and then we'll put them in the one acre holding ponds. Uh, we're just taking the muskie and putting them in our ox bow to hold till we begin spawning. Spawning is basically the process of fish mating. Oh yeah, this is a really nice fish. It's getting some air going through its lungs again. It takes a while sometimes for them to get lively again. Basically, the oxbow is a large fish tank. It's a, a 13 and a half acre pond, and we use to hold brood stock. Uh, the fish are fed and, uh, and well maintained in this pond. We monitor the fish. When they're ready to spawn, we will shock them up again and move them to one acre ponds for spawning purposes. In the spring, we will bring them up, we measure them, sex them, and we inject them with carp pituitary. 35 and a half inch female. It is a pituitary gland of the common carp. It helps induce ovulation in the females and, and increases milk production in the males. And now both fish will be ready to spawn. That means the female will release her eggs and the male will fertilize those eggs. Typically 36 to, uh, to 54 hours or so, they're ready. Pond 49 for the female and the male goes to 11. Well, we just need to keep track of uh, how many females we put in each pond. That way we know how many we're looking for when we go back in to electrofish them out. 
We just like to get them out and get them revived, get them back in the pond so they can recover quickly. Now, these one acre holding pens, we go out to those, we take the fish out, shock them up, bring them inside, and then the spawning process begins. The fish are gently taken out and put into a holding tank. After they're gently anesthetized, they take them out and measure them, weigh them, The fish, which are ready to spawn because the hormones introduced, are taken to a station where the females are milked of their eggs. Then they take the milt from the males. Make sure they have plenty of both ingredients so that the eggs will be well fertilized. Combine these two. Then they take a turkey feather, a wild turkey feather. And with this turkey feather, they make great stirs. They gently aerate, and they have just the right amount of spine to stir these things. They make a perfect agent to combine the fish's eggs and melt. After the eggs water hardened, they will be placed into the McDonnell Douglas jars until they're ready to hatch, which generally is 12 to 13 days. After about 12 to 13 days, the eggs will begin to hatch. Once eggs hatch, they are placed into trays uh, where they will uh, live for about a week to 12 days. During this time, they will utilize their yolk sac as a food source and they will also feed some on zooplankton in the tanks. Once they go through what is called swim up, it's when all the fry will come to the surface of the tanks. Then the fry are gently lifted into a container where they are counted and weighed. At that point, the hatch data is recorded. The fry are then ready to be moved outside. The fry will then be moved to a holding pond and they were fed lots of minnows over the course of the summer and they will remain in these ponds until they are nine inches in length, which is about 12 to 13 weeks. Once the small fish reach nine inches, the ponds are then lowered and the fish move towards the drain area where they're collected. Then the fish are taken back into the hatchery. And some of the nine inch muskie are stocked into streams and rivers while the majority of them will grow to 13 inches or so before being stocked. Now here's the part where you don't want to be a minnow. These little guys are fed on a heavy diet of little bitty minnows. Now this whole drawn out process takes about six months. Now typically muskie around Kentucky, historically, spawn themselves in small streams, but in a large lake situation, they have to be stocked because they don't have the conditions available to spawn. Now, in order to keep musky numbers about where we need them, we have to stock them once a year. Once they are released, a musky will live in Kentucky waters for around 12 years. They typically grow to be in the mid-50s uh, while feeding on a variety of suckers and shad. And it's always exciting for me to hear from anglers who are catching the fish that we stock here for them. 
I got a musk. Really get a hold of a good fish, big fish. It's just the adrenaline and real exciting and everything else. You have got to be kidding me. How big is he? You just meant you're going to see him. Right there he is. <laughs> yeah. I'm not man. believing this. Boy, it's beautiful coming up out of the water like that. I guess that's why you come down here and fish just days after days to try to catch one of them things. And it's a real challenge to catch a, a good, good big muskie. There you go. That's a legal muskie, too. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Look at there. That's a decent fish. <laughs> I about wore him out, I believe. And it's getting better and better every year. By continuing this whole process, and stocking fish throughout the state, we assure the very heritage of the fish that came from Kentucky and keep our waters stocked for the anglers to enjoy.